Hello and welcome everybody. How are you? Just clean that up a bit. Happy New Year. God, I haven't seen you guys for ages. So Happy New Year. I'm going to get right into it because um, people, I think, will be catching up on this and there's nothing I hate more than a rambling beginning of a live to watch on catch up. Messy room, don't care. Messy face, don't care. Roots, don't care. <laughs> Um, so this is like a little idea that I've had, um, and I'm going to see how it goes. And so for every Monday, every Monday of January, nine o'clock here live, I'm going to do this, um, chat and people that have been following me for years and, 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 and know me from Loose Women and stuff like that. If you're, if you're watching from America, Loose Women is like... Um, the UK's version of the talk or the view. So lots of people know me from there. And um, God, I've had a journey with body loathing. <laughs> and those that have watched me for a long time, hi Lee, sorry, I saw you ringing, but I was in the middle of another phone call on the other phone, but I'll call you after. Um, people that know me from, um, you know, over a long period of time will know that years ago I went to um, Overeaters Anonymous. Overeaters Anonymous, Anonymous is exactly, it runs in exactly the same way as AA and CA and it was really my first venture into understanding and accepting that I wasn't just an ugly, horrible, greedy pig, which if I'm honest, that is the way that was the tick-tock in the back of my head for, oh God, most of my life. That was the tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. The stinky thinking, the nasty voice, the rat-a-tat-tat that no matter what I was doing, no matter how many successes I had, no matter how many times I might have done a nice photo shoot and people would have said that oh, I look lovely or I look this or I look that. Always in the back of my head, tuck, 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 tuck. You know, greedy, lazy. Um, yeah. A mess is, is what I would always tell myself. And I was a mess because my body was a mess. And, you know, if only I could get to such and such weight and if only I could get to such and such size and if only I could get here and if only I could do this and if only I could do that, all my dreams will come true. You know, if I went for an audition because I was an actress before and I didn't get a part, it would be, there would be almost a relief. There would be almost a relief because I would think, Oh my God, I won't have to deal with being too fat, um, t t too big for the part, you know. And and and, so, and I have fluctuated. I've gone from, in my adult life, I've gone from nine stone to 13 stone. The thinking was exactly the same. Whether I was nine stone or whether I was 13 stone, the stinking thinking, the negative thoughts, the toxicity, the delaying of life, once I am, oh, a bit thinner, or once I am this, or once I am that, then everything will start to happen. Then I'll be happy. Then I'll be able to be in a proper relationship. Then I'll be able to love somebody worthy of me. Then I'll put off life the whole fucking time. So this idea that I've got for Monday nights isn't going to be about me sitting here being a motivational speaker or anything like that. I'm not qualified. I'm not... You know, I'm just somebody that's lived my life and just like had quite a few different experiences around body stuff, made some real headway in the way that I think and I feel about myself, taking 10 steps forward, taking two steps back, taking five steps forward, taking 10 steps back. I've kind of done that through my life. But something that really helped me, and I am so much healthier and happier today and so much more accepting of my body. And, and some on some rare occasions, rare, rare because I am not body confident people think that I am I'm not I am not body confident I have body acceptance and on some days I actually don't think about my body at all anymore and on some days I love it and if somebody had said that to me 20 years ago I would have laughed them out the building and the really first big step for me, though there's been lots of other things since, the first big step for me was going to Overeaters Anonymous and um, not so much, I didn't follow the programme, I didn't do the 12 steps, I didn't do any of that, but what really, really worked for me was hearing other people's stories and 
hearing other people's stories week in, week out, with the thought in my head that I had to look for the similarities and not the differences in what people were saying. And what I mean by that is you might, I might have seen somebody sitting in a chair, sitting in a chair, part of the group, and she might be talking about, or he might be talking about his absolute, you know, gorging, like, likes to bake a whole tray of cakes and eat the whole tray of cakes and da 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 and, the, and the, uh, but this person is totally gorgeous looking and a size eight right so when I was first going to the meetings I would like be going well how am I going to get anything out of listening to her she's got no idea what it's like to be me in this body that I da 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 but actually all the similarities were there and because it was the way that she was or he was thinking and it was the to hear somebody else talk in the mad riddles that people do that have bad body image you know for those people that don't you know great and you don't this certainly this video is of no interest to you but for many 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 of us Smart people, um, not so smart people, hugely successful people, not so successful people, all kinds of people waste huge amounts of their valuable time and their life hating their body. And that's why the question of this video, the starting question is, why do we hate our bodies? Because I think it's a very detailed thing. But I also think the key is fairly simple to unlocking the pain of it. If you really are sick and tired of feeling the way that you're feeling, it is possible to have change. Not for everything to be all hearts and flowers and be wonderful and you're leaping about naked and just saying that you feel fabulous and you love every part of yourself. It's not that. But there is a chance to feel so much better. So with these Monday nights, I thought, I'm just going to have a little go at laying the stall out in that way. That by reading out people's comments, reading out people's stories, and obviously this is just today, so it will get, it will get, I'm going to get various um, um, experts in as well to talk, but, and we'll get longer stories because I've only had, uh, only had Instagram today, but we'll put up a link where we, under this one where we can get longer stories where we can really read your stories about your 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 road to um to self-loathing what were the things that that triggered it for you so when you hear me telling another person's story if you can try as hard as you can to hear where the similarities might be in your stinking thinking don't look for the differences look for the similarities and then you try and hear the madness, like what I used to do sometimes in the meetings, I would say, I would sit there and I'd be listening to someone and I would find it quite hard at the beginning to be kind to myself about it. And, and so I, what I would do is I would be imagining that that person that I'm listening to was somebody that I loved, my child, my granddaughter, my a, a dear friend, a sister. And then I would try and hear it in that way so that I could get some sanity around it. Um, And so I think... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I say, I'm not an expert, I'm not anything. I'm just a woman who's had, who has the same struggles as many of us. I do get sick and tired of people that say, oh, it's just really easy, just don't think like that, because it's not really easy. Because why would so much of the Western world be this way? So it's not easy. And it takes some stuff to do it. And it takes some willingness Years ago, I went, when, um, for those that, you, that know me well, you know Mark, but somebody who might have come here for the first time, my husband is 20 years sober. So he went to rehab 20 years ago and I learned so much from his journey into rehab. And um, yeah, yeah. So, and, and so we want to, I just, I just, and, and, and what I learned was listening to other people and trying to really, really, say I've had enough 
that was the biggest thing because if you haven't had enough and if you are addicted to the familiarity of the anxiety that was really difficult to let go of because I was like oh this is something that I do every day like a hundred times a day I go I hate my arms I hate my elbows I hate my thighs I hate my stomach I hate my hate 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 imagine just imagine that your body hears that every single day it's so cruel it's so brutal we're so unkind to ourselves when we do that. So listen to some of the ones. As I say, they're, they're going to be short today because they're from Instagram. And thank you so much for everybody that did that did send them in. Um, I am, yeah, I was overwhelmed by how many we got. I'm really annoyed because somebody left a message under my um, Instagram post. I did a Kim Kardashian Instagram post today and um, somebody left a message under there and I can't remember her name or anything, but um, I will read it out next week because it really did sum up for me what I was, what I wanted to talk about here today and what I wanted to, I thought it would have been a really good start, but classic me didn't, didn't actually uh, screenshot it. Uh, you, my, the writing is this big, so you're going to lose my head as I go in to try and actually read these tiny, tiny pages. Okay, well, let's start over here first. Le Leo, I love stretch marks and wobbly bellies, but I do worry about will people find me attractive now I have a wobbly belly. Having photos taken of me for reference for life modelling has helped me. It's such a funny one, isn't it? It's so rare that you meet a woman that is okay with her belly. Why is that? I'm fascinated by this. And I've said this before, you know, the young baby girl that sits. If you've ever sat watching a baby girl in the sea or in their paddling pool in the garden and they do this, they will nearly always, if they've got a bikini, if they've got a bare belly, they will they'll do it in the bath, they get the water and they do this with their belly and they're just... It's just like overjoyed at this like flesh and just like the, the way that it moves. And it's so sad that that, the baby patting the belly and joyful, turns into this and turns into this and turns into this. And I hate it. And like holding your flesh and squeezing it and hating it. You know? There's so many different factors that come into our psyche to get us to that place. Mark always says to me, I don't understand what you mean when you say riots, not diets. And I said, yeah, because it's so, so fucking deep because the diet culture is so ingrained in us that we should be rioting about it because it it messes us heads up. It takes us from the baby girl. Goes, oh, my tummy, my tummy to... Uh, I mean, the other day I had a real moment because I mean, I am I am so far moved on from where I was for so many years. But I went for a walk after Christmas. I could feel my belly wobbling in a way that it hadn't for the last few weeks. And I went to that place, Leo. I went to that place, and I was thinking, Oh my god, I hate my. Body. Oh my god, what did I eat yesterday? I had to slap myself. I had to literally. I did that because I was like, Look at the way you're just going to slip in. To that way of thinking, that stinking way of thinking. This is disgusting. I'm disgusting. What have I been eating? Stop. I don't do that. I used to do that a hundred times a day. Now I'll do it a f once or twice a day, and I can quieten the voice. So you you really you really can quieten that voice. And you're an artist, Leo. You know, just revel in it. Go and see some of those beautiful paintings. You know, with the great the Botticelli's and all that beautiful um, squidgy bellies. Part of why we keep that fat there is to hold estrogen. Why do we hate our bellies? Where life comes from. God, it's such a fuck up, isn't it? Um, so this is from Instagram um, from Shauna, I think. Um, I have days when I love it and days when I hate it. Clothes just aren't always designed for curvier figures yet. And that goes to that whole thing about society wanting us to be a certain way and then we grab onto it we take the most difficult part that society asks us to be you know which you know for sake of argument a model a model who is like a model because 
a model is a model because they're you know they're they're freaks of nature they're extraordinarily beautiful and extraordinarily skinny and extraordinarily this and extraordinarily that and we take that as our model for ourselves and then it's the most perfect way to hate on ourselves, isn't it but we've got to look to ourselves. um you know another thing that i learned from over it's anonymous was like i i put up a photo not i used to in the old days put a photo up of say like some gorgeous person some gorgeous actress or model or whatever and I would try and like, so I put it on the fridge. So like every time I opened the fridge, I could say to myself, ah, oh, well, you see, that's why you look so disgusting and you don't look like her because you're eating. And it was just like, <laughs> so bonkers. So what I did was I put up a photo of myself when I felt my best and then I worked towards that. Um, because you see, it's got nothing to do with the way that we think. What did I say right, the, the way that we look? Cause what did I say right at the beginning? Whether I was nine stone or I was 13 stone. I the same, exactly the same self-loathing was there. I really don't think it's necessarily about weight. Anyone who's lost a lot of weight will know that you just shift, will, will have experienced that thing of then shifting to someone else. I hate my knees. I hate my stretch marks. I hate my cellulite. I hate my craggy neck. I try so hard. I do, I do have a problem with my neck. I try, because we're not just talking about weight here. It's about the whole thing. It's about the way we pick ourselves to pieces when this brain could be doing so much other stuff. But I mean, I constantly go, oh, I hate my neck. I hate my neck. I do this and I go, I hate my neck. And I just think that's really unhealthy to just like put hate in yourself. So my first thing would be to say, is it healthy for your body to be doing that? Do you think it puts you in some sort of trauma, you know, and then could call dis cause dis-ease and then call dis cause disease? Because I do. I think our body hears it. I really do. Um, so here we have, Katie says, it's carried me round marathons. Oh, I love this message. Yeah, I've never seen it as looking good enough. I've been chubby, I've been anorexic and never felt satisfied. I blame social media as I'm only 19 and every year has been spent trying to change how I look. Oh my God, that itch so much to cry. Because you're only 19. You're only 19. And I'm telling you that, right, I'm I'm 60 next year and I'm telling you this. I'm promising you this, right? Listen to me. I really hope you're here and you're 19. Unless you literally get hold of the wheel, right? Because you're on this road, right? You're on this road and you're smart because you said this body's carried me around marathons and yet still it's not good enough. You're smart enough. So you know, you know that stinking thinking, but you're on this. You're holding the steering wheel firm, going straight ahead. And you could have the whole of the rest of your life hating on yourself. Or you can take the nugget that you gave yourself there. You gave it. You gave yourself the answer. It's like, this body's run marathons. That, that's just incredible. Do you know, when I ran a marathon, right, and it, I didn't really run it, it took me nearly seven hours, got to the end and I went, oh, well, I wasn't very good at that. Straight away, straight away, I, I had to take it away from myself and I had to punish myself. So it's that punishing, that stinking thinking that we do that keeps leading us to more stinking thinking. You've got, you've got the key there. You've really got the key there. You have got the key there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's that simple and it's that complicated. But what it needs is the patience. You can't just suddenly have body acceptance. You can't just suddenly, it's about dismantling and not letting those people, like trolls, live in your head. They're trolls. The trolls that snatch away all the good bits by just taking you back to something that is so meaningless which is this body, this, this body that's like that. Just, I just wanted to do a quick little thing on body acceptance, body confidence. I think there's a lot of people that misconstrue it and think that what it means is that you can run down the beach in a bikini and feel fantastic. Every time you step out the door, you feel like a million dollars. That is not it. That is not it. That is not it. It's about accepting. 
I also don't believe when I say body acceptance, I don't mean accepting if you're, if you're very overweight, it's not good for your health. It's as simple as that. It's just not good for your health. But if you're happy with it, that is your choice. But when I say body acceptance, I don't necessarily mean, oh, whatever weight you are, just what I'm talking about is, you know, I'm not, I haven't got perfectly smooth skin. I haven't got long enough legs. I, my arms are too short. My nose is too big. I wish I was a size 8 naturally instead of a size 16. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a size 16. I was just, I was, you know, <laughs> it is about accepting that your body is your body and trying to have it as healthy in mind and body as you can. That's what my interpretation of body acceptance is. Body acceptance isn't for me, oh, just sitting and eating whatever I want and, you know, just getting to whatever size I want because that doesn't give me vitality, it doesn't give me energy, it doesn't give me a long life. So that, for body acceptance, that that's not what I mean when I say it. Body acceptance is accepting that it's not going to be as perfect as a model's and it doesn't matter. It just, it, it, it just doesn't matter. And anyone that judges you for your body, you don't want them anywhere near you. And one of the steps to that is not to try, not to judge others, not to judge other women and not say, oh God, look at her legs. Even inside your own head, when you hear yourself saying it, say to yourself, I heard that, to yourself, I heard that. Because actually what you're doing is you're feeding that fear back to yourself. Because if you're always judging other women's bodies, I really don't like it when women say horrible things about other women's bodies, I really don't like it. Because I think you're really hurting yourself with that because you're always going to be insecure that somebody's saying that about you. So checking your checking yourself out. If other women are bitching about the other way that somebody somebody else's looks looks, just just stay quiet. Just stay. You know, you can you don't have to have a big fight. Oh God, you know, I think you're disgusting. You don't want that. You know, you're not freedom fighter. But you can just you can just neutralize yourself out of it because it takes a village. Because if more and more of us do that, the more it spreads out. And it's interesting there that you say social media because social media is one of the things, but it's not all the things. It's the choice to keep going back to the social media. It's your choice. You are not powerless over social media. You are totally empowered by deciding who you follow. And I have to say you're very smart for 19 to be here with this older woman. <laughs> Honestly, don't follow anyone that makes you feel bad or leaves you feeling hollow. Just unfollow them they're, they're not meaning they're doing anything terrible or anything nasty but if somebody leaves you feeling Ugh, then don't follow them like if you've got a friend that leaves you feeling like that pull away let them become more of an acquaintance than than a friend um you know friendship is is, is a big word and if people that are close to you are leaving you feeling worse about yourself then that's not good for you because i think if you're on a path of trying to undo this stuff you have to really nurture yourself and look after yourself and look after who's around you and look after what you see and look after what you watch look after what you read look after it all in your period of recovering because you're vulnerable when you're recovering it's easy to just go back to oh god because actually, actually it's quite easy to just sit back and keep hating yourself it's hard work to want to change the path but it, it can be done um ellie denning i don't feel I will ever like my body. I don't see what others see. In and out of recovery with anorexia, I don't even know how it got to this. I've punished my body so much. It's tough to get help. Ellie, I don't know if you know. I don't know if I've said this to you before. It, the Overeaters Anonymous is for all kinds of eating disorders. I would really recommend you go because it's free and you can walk in there tomorrow and they're online and you don't have to go to a doctor and then go and it's been you know this has been going for a hundred years this this system you do, it, it is not about religion you don't have to have the religion it's about listening to other people that are like-minded and i've sent a number of people of, that i've known over the years with anorexia who have been let up you know come out of hospital and then had just have felt so at sea because there's nowhere they, you know it's the difference between the aliens and the earthlings isn't it people that have no disordered thinking about their food or their bodies they're like we all feel like the aliens and you won't feel like an alien the trouble is with ovary is anonymous i wish they would change the, the name of it because it kind of pushes anorexics away but it, it there's everybody in there anorexics um bulimics overeaters emotional eaters it's just disordered eating and it might really help you um um this one hit me, Pinny. 
all that she put on the message on Instagram is very, very unhappy. And this one just broke my heart. Beach, forest, I'm ashamed of my body. It makes me feel sick to look at it. What happened? What happened where, you know, where did that, that is such a strong thing to say. I used to talk like that. I said, it makes me sick, it makes me angry. I hate it. Um, anonymous, awful, fat, ugly. Um, Hannah, and it makes me feel physically sick daily. I try so hard not to hate it. You've got to really want to not hate it and you've got to every single day. It's funny how often I'll say to people, well, you've got to choose something. You look in the mirror and just find something. This is what I did. Um, again, I'm not an expert. This is just things that I did. Something, anything that I liked. I just started with something. And you know what I started with? I like that this out eyebrow goes up like that. Funny, my daughter has it. It's so lovely. She's got it. And I just started with that. And now we're just in the morning. I just say, oh, I, I really like that. I really like that part of my eyebrow. Not much more than that. It's not about taking all your clothes off and holding a mirror to your vagina like you people say, saying, I love myself, I am woman. Stutch. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, something really small. Or brush your teeth. If, if you hate these teeth that you like, these, oh, I love that tooth. Every single day, every time you pass the mirror, say something positive and kind. Find something. Could be that particular curve. It could be how straight it is. It could be that... It just every it could be your ear. Just start really, really small. And what happens is you just make new pathways in your brain instead of going hate this, hate this. You just make a new little a new little track in the sand that you can just walk, put your footsteps back into. One of my therapists gave me that one. It took me, she said it to me, and it took me about 10 years to start doing it. <laughs> Did <laughs> 10 years later. Went, Oh, I'm going to try it. So, you know, some of these things that you might hear and think, yeah, some of this, all of this stuff, you might go, yeah, well, fair enough. And all. But some of it you might put in practice. Some of it might come to you in a few weeks, months or years. You don't know. Some Something that I've read out here might chime with you and go, God, that's what I do. Why do I do that? Um, I hate my body. This is my mad. I hate my body, but continue to binge eat as a sort of punishment, I guess. So interesting that, isn't it? So people that don't struggle with their weight or with their body image, and this truly isn't just about weight. You could be here now and be skinny as anything and, and hate me, but I don't want anyone to feel like this is only about fat, fat. But when people who are overweight and people that are thin say to them something negative in the thought that it's going to knock them out of it and get them to lose weight, it doesn't work. Just like you, my mad house, on the days I felt really fat, on the days I was so exhausted from counting the calories, the mental fucking torture of it, on the days that I got on the scales and it didn't tell me what I wanted to say, what would I do? Stuff my face. Because why? Because I'm sad, I'm frustrated, I'm fucked off, I don't want to tell anyone because it's embarrassing and here I am again, this piece of shit, just stuff my face. So what do you do? What does a baby do? Right from when they're first born in the womb, suck, suck, crying, they suck their finger, S sucking, pushing down emotions. People smoke, people do drugs, people drink alcohol, people abuse, you know, all sorts of things. And people also abuse food. People abuse food and they use it to medicate when they like, when they're hating on themselves. So it's something that I learned from somewhere, one group or something that I went to, which was 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 what when I found myself reaching, and I could I still have to do it now, I still have to use that. When I find myself reaching, I, I try and just stop for a second and just pull it back and go, Okay, what's my first thought? My first thought is now I can't bear how I'm feeling. I just I hate myself. I hate Okay, so the first thought was, I'm stuff this in my mouth just to shut it up for a second. It's only going to last for as long as you're chewing. And then when you've swallowed it, what's the second thought? What's the second thing that happens after you've chewed it and you swallowed it? More self-loathing. It's just as simple, it's as simple as that. So it is like, distract. If you can catch yourself in that moment and take yourself away from the food... 
and say, what am I sad about? Or am I angry? Or am I lonely? Or did somebody really upset me at work today? Or do I hate my partner today? Or are my kids driving me fucking mad? Or if my grandmother once more says to me, oh, it's a shame you put on my... You know, what is it? What is it that triggered me to reach for sex, drugs, alcohol, shopping or food? Because if your chosen drug is food, it's food. Because it's a way of, you know... And then if it's that you're lonely, could you do something? Could you pick up the phone? Could you chat to somebody? If it's just that you've had a shit day and you feel so miserable and you feel so horrible, could you just run a lovely bath? I know people always go, oh, God, run a bath or if that's going to sort anything out. Do you know what? If you like baths, it really does. <laughs> like, I've got myself out of so many situations that I was going to dive head first into and I've run myself a lovely bath. <laughs> and it's like, it's just broken that. It's just taken me off that main road at full throttle and it's just paused it for a bit where I can just think and then I've then I might be putting some nice body cream on and I've just been a bit kinder to myself and then I think well do you know what instead of just going to the kitchen just stuffing everything I might just go to bed and just like I don't know watch a film or you know read a book maybe I'll read a steamy book you know it's 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 about getting yourself off the off the main road nurturing oh this is Jane Aylwood she was on our um Instagram and she said no what is it again I've forgotten it again it's so good nurturing nurturary because you know there's veganary there's all these i like that to nurture yourself um elsa pop is so draining to hate yourself i've had a stammer since i was two i hated it until i said my wedding vows now i love my little difference anyone who has a problem with it it's their problem elsa i love that i love that but it took some work to get there didn't it it did and that's the trouble, isn't it? Too often we just want a shortcut. Shortcuts are short term. That's what I say. You can't shortcut it. Um, and sometimes it does take so long to just be able to put into place some of the little things that, that resonate and you think, like, oh, that might help. Hi, hi, Ninad. Hope you're well. I should, I should send your love to Mark. Trina Cotton, all I've had is a banana today. Looking forward to going shopping tomorrow and eating well and right. Yeah, there'll be loads of people today, New Year's Day, that go, right, that's it. Right, that's it. The punishment is beginning. I'm not having anything. Oh, my God. Every single New Year's for my adult life, that 19-year-old, I was talking to it earlier, up until, I can't remember what it was, three or four years ago, I said, never, ever doing a diet again. Never, ever, ever starting a diet ever again. Every diet I went on, came off it, and became more obese than the time before. Put all the weight back on and a bit more. I don't diet. I will never diet. If anybody talks about calories in front of me, I just have to like bite my lip because it's a load of old shit. It's a load of old rubbish calories and count calories. So I just don't do it. Um, anonymous. I'm gross and I hate looking at myself. I'm fat and I hate my arms, my back and my belly. So nearly all of your body... Just going to let that sit for a second because I know there's lots of people that are thinking, thinking me too and I'm, I'm sitting here going if I dig down to it what am I all right with because it's always there it's like a it's an addiction you know that self-loathing is in there at any time you can access it so the more often you say it the more able you are to access it whereas I now don't forget I'm 60 next year so this has to take me a long time. I'm not doing a woo, -woo, -woo. <laughs> Just be like me. I'm not. It took me a long time. It's, I have to remember. I have to go, oh, yeah, right, sure, I do hate my... Because I've changed the path. Because I just... Every time I've gone to say something horrible to myself for the last five years... Not every time. God, not, not every time. That, no, no, that's wrong. I started off slow and I, and I failed and I started and I fell back and I not failed, fell back and then I started again and I fell back and then I started again and then I fell back. And then almost without me knowing, it, it, I just started to just dismiss it quicker. You know, like I said earlier on, the other day I went for a walk, I feel my belly jogging and I went into all that stinking thinking. So Anon, please can you say to yourself, could you make yourself the little tiniest promise that every time you go to those words of hate about your body, you just say to yourself, noticing, 
don't even have to say something positive yet just i've noticed that every time say in your head i've noticed that i've noticed that because the more you notice it the more you will start to go oh, fuck, i do this a lot well, how is this serving me is this helping me have a better day is this helping me be a happier person is this helping me be a better friend a better woman a better is this helping me is this serving me or is it actually just making me feel fucking worse all the time and i'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired i wonder if there's anything that i could change those words to could i say i accept my belly i do i accept you know i remember somebody earlier saying about their apron and i was like oh god sorry i don't want the people across the road it's funny isn't it because i do it all on my instagram so so like that's my that's what an apron is if anyone's worried wondering what an apron yeah look I bet i can put a pen under it oh hang on <laughs> there you go stays there stays there that's an apron that's called an apron right little baby girl just tapping it look belly button goes down the amount of time I used to go oh my god i've got an apron oh my god it's disgusting now i go oh look i hate the fact hated hate my belly button because it goes down like this because it's sacked from being you know fat a lot of my life having fat not being fat having fat in there and having two babies so it hangs up now i don't i go oh look it's <laughs> Look at his little sad. Here it looks sad. <laughs> and I, I get playful with my body. I try to go. I try to go back to that kid. Now I bet as I was doing that, people were. Some of you were going. Oh, and some of you go. That's not that bad. And I bet some of you have are harder on yourselves, and you've probably got even less of an apron. But you're harder on yourself because we don't see ourselves clearly. We don't. So I have got an apron. I don't hate it. It's there. I accept it. I accept it. Because to hate it uses a whole lot of energy. Ooh, I, I like to do this. I like to go... <laughs> now, guess what? I have acceptance that I'm going to lose a bit more weight, so I'm going to have a bit more skin. I'm probably going to have a bit more of an apron. Because the reason I'm going to lose a bit more weight isn't for the way that it looks. Because I really, 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 my dad has loads of heart problems and stroke. I really don't want a heart attack and stroke. <laughs> so I just, I, that's what I do. I do it with no end on how people will say to me, oh, God, you've lost weight. You look good. I go, oh, do I? Because I've got no idea how much I weigh. No idea. No idea. It's just like, I want more energy. I want to feel vital. I want to feel... And these are just little shifts that you do have to make daily. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy, but it is doable. If you do it every day, you'll be amazed how you change. And if you've got children, it's the single most important thing you can do for them psychologically is to be better to yourself. Because forget about social media. You are the biggest influence on your child, on your niece, on your nephew, on your anyone around you. You, how you talk to yourself. Somebody here, I was just looking for it because I really liked this comment. Um, oh, can I? Oh, yeah. So I didn't get your name. I cut the thing off. It says, my granddaughter has just told me it upsets her when I say I hate my body or that I'm just ugly. Her granddaughter has said that to her. Her granddaughter hates her grandmother saying that to her. My mum has never taken a single compliment that I've ever given her. I said to my mum, oh, you look, you look lovely. Oh, oh mum, you look like you've lost weight. Well, you're not helping me, are you? My mum, my mum has never been fat. But she actually, actually has always talked about herself negatively. And I've only just really in the last few years started to really realise that. Well, you know, without meaning that, my mum has passed that on to me. And without meaning that, I passed that on to my daughters and my eldest daughter very much so because I didn't have consciousness of any of this. I was just negative speaking all the time about my body and she was picking it up. So if you can't do it for yourself, really fake it for your kids. That's how, I, that's a big starter for me. I said, oh, I love my arms in this dress. I was lying my back teeth out. 
I was just plain old fashioned lying because I thought, I, I don't want them to have this. And you lie and you lie and you lie and you lie. Fake it to make it, fake it to make it, fake it to make it. And suddenly you're just saying it. <laughs> drip, 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 drip. Um, I don't recognise my body now. I'm 51. I just avoid looking at it and I feel disconnected somehow. God, I bet. Does anyone connect with that? That's Victoria. I bet so. I bet so. The disconnection is a really big thing. Do you know what, Victoria? Because I've shifted away from being really, really negative, though I, I, you know, I'm on call to it all the time, I have to watch everything. Sometimes when I am really loving on my body and like going, oh God, look at that boob just hanging down there. But oh, isn't it lovely? You know, I don't, I don't go, oh wow, this is a perfect breast and I look perfect. No, it's a saggy breast and it's this and it's that. Oh, it's a saggy stomach, but I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, be good to it anyway. And sometimes when I'm being really nice like that, I think, because sometimes I have these intrusive thoughts where I go, oh, you look fantastic. And then I feel so disassociated from it. It's so weird. Like you just said, I feel like, what am I talking about? Because he's so ingrained in there from so many years, you know. But on a positive note, the less you allow these intrusive thoughts, the more time you have for so many other thoughts, so many other conversations, so many other books you want to read, crappy TV shows you want to watch. Just it makes space in your brain, which is nice. I'll tell you what as well, you're not so fucking tired because it is exhausting hating on yourself. And the less you do it, the more measured your eating becomes, the more measured your eating becomes, the more you think about what you eat. Like, mm, I'm thinking, oh, Oh, I'll put a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit. I'm going to put some carrots in and put that. Because actually, the last time I did that, I felt so much more energised. And then I was more fun when I went out. And then I da-da-da. So that you're eating for the energy. The deliciousness always got to be delicious. Any meal that isn't delicious is a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. It's always got to be delicious. And it's got to give me energy. And that's what I want. But anyway. So, yeah. What I'm going to do is... Well, Michelle will do it for me, actually, because I'm shit at it. Why do you hate your body? And what bits of your body do you hate? And can you pinpoint it to something? There's a, there's a message that I got in from Instagram today. And it was it really shocked me. I had to read it out to... Um, I read it out to Mark. And I said, oh, my God, look at this, Mark. And, oh, where is the lady? Oh, God. See, next week I'll be better on this. I suddenly wanted to do it on New Year's Day because I knew there'd be so many people hating on themselves, but I will be better organised next week. I bet my friend Michelle is laughing at that and thinking, no, she bloody won't. But I'm making a promise. Oh, where is it? Oh, ah. So this is from Stacey, and she says, I've hated my body. Wait for this. Wait for this. If we go back to... If we go back to what I said about us being such a major influence in the way that people that we love grow up around us. I've hated my body since I was eight when I overheard my doctor tell my parents I was heavy. Incredible. I don't know how old you are now, Stacey, but you know, you have to be mindful of the way that you talk about yourself and about people around them because it, we because we're so fucked up in the west this is totally fucked up in the west because of our because of the you know advertising world social media and media because of all that that's constantly being fed to us we are very 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 vulnerable to people saying um shitty stuff or not even shitty stuff stuff without really realizing you know um so I thought that was really powerful on that. Uh, JP Candles, I'm learning to be more confident about it. The older I get, I didn't used to be though. Well, that is one of the good things about being old, but I'm just uh, older. But that's one of the things I'm so passionate about because I have two daughters. It's like I say to them all the time, don't wait, start the process now. Don't wait, start the process. If somebody has spoken to me like this when I was 18, 
16. It would have made such a difference. Really would. So, Azia Boya, I was journaling earlier on and I put a picture of my dog. Then I hesitated, didn't want to put a picture of myself. Then I paused. Am I more accepting of my dog than I am of myself? Not anymore. Oh, is there a picture of you on it now? I'd love that. But that is that is just a perfect example of what I'm saying about how we need to, like, pick ourselves up. How we have to, like, you know, just like, yeah, just go, oh, oh, recognise what I did, saw what I did there, 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 you know. So Michelle is saying the link to submit stories is now in the video description. So... The next one of these that we do next Monday will be, um, I will read out like probably two or three of them, uh, depending how much time we have. And then it will be very much you trying to hear the similarities and maybe then share back something that you got from it. So it will be listening to what I've read out and then maybe you saying, wow that really resonated with me or I didn't it didn't at all or something like that and that's how we'll share back and forth it won't be me talking so much I don't want to bore the arse off you anyway um Ninad says I can recommend everyone taking acting classes really helps with confidence in acting schools you learn to love yourself and what you're capable of what you can do well yeah a lot of people do do that it's, it's like drama classes like that aren't about you being an actor, but about pushing yourself through and, and confidence, low self-esteem, anything that improves your, your low self-esteem. And the last thing I would say is, I would highly recommend, if you have gone on a really strict diet today, I would highly recommend coming off it, <laughs> in my opinion. Because the thing is with a diet that you go on, you have to come off it. And then when you come off it, what do you go back to? Rethink the whole way that you eat. Try and get back to like knowing when you're hungry and just eating when you're hungry and not just because it's the time of day. Massively increasing your vegetables and your fruit, but not loads of grapes and bananas and all that. Not like hush sugar, keeping your blood sugar like level so you're not like grabbing for chocolate and stuff. And just do something that you love that makes you move. Dancing, jumping up and down, skipping, walking, gym, not gym, uh, swimming, whatever you... It has to be something you like because otherwise you won't stick to it. And that is that is the key to getting to a good weight. It's like good food, not counting calories um, and dealing with your emotions rather than swallowing them with a great big donut, which we've all been guilty of many times. <laughs> anyway, if this is your first time to the channel, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell because the notification bell will tell you that we're going live. And Mark and I will be back tomorrow morning um, with Coffee Moaning. And Mark is going to be doing some of these with um, around alcohol. So it, it's we thought why don't we share some of this stuff that we've that have really helped us on a regular basis so i'm just going to see how it goes for a month we'll see whether we like it and whether it helps um i moved my stereo to my kitchen today to dance not eat oh thank you you know what you've just inspired me again because i keep saying i'm going to do that and i don't do that i am going to when i get up this in the morning tomorrow i'm going to have a dance with my earphones on while i'm making my first cup of tea that's a step there must be something. Sisters are doing it by themselves. There's got to be some tune that you would always jump up to. And if you can't, because you can't, you know, you've got, there's a lot of people that have got bad knees, got it, even in your chairs. A dance tomorrow morning when you put on that kettle to stop. Love you. Riots, not diets. Bye.